the solution. YouTube, what's popping is the solution for the various platforms. Instagram, YouTube, to be more specific. That's what SP. Got another review. It's a double up, right? It's a double up of one of my favorite runners. Um, the Sockney collection is crazy right now. I'm looking down here right now on my rack and uh, let's see. Mm, six, nine, 10, 12, 13. Got a pair in another room. So 13 pairs of Sockney's. These are comfortable. Oh, oh my goodness. And in here is a pair that I've been stalking, if you will, because I wanted the price to go down. I didn't want to pay the 110 for them. You know, I mean, they're worth it and stuff like that, but I just knew it's a sneaker that the younger generation is not checking for in mass, but they look great. Joggers, jeans, if you got flavor and style, you can hook these up, which I do. You know, so I'm gonna get into the shoe that I was checking out first. So you got the grid 8500s, and I love this salmon in navy blue. Now in the sneakers group, I posted these video, this video about a week or so ago, and um, I had the flash on, and I did it for a reason because I love 3M. So there's 3M hits right here on the tongue, and it's that one-sided tongue action thing that Saucony likes to do. It keeps the tongue from moving around. And it's right here on the toe box, headed back to the, the mid of the shoe area right here. That's all 3M. So a salmon 3M hit, icy blue sole. Um, it's a darker blue, so these aren't gonna really turn yellow. With the speckling, and with, with actually, shout out to Foot Action, North Star Mall. Because whoever hooked that mannequin up with these on and nobody paid attention, I think it had on a, a champion sweatsuit. Nobody paid attention to them. I don't buy the outfits that the mannequins wear. But I don't think anybody was paying attention to these. They just saw the champion sweatsuit because that's what was selling. And uh, I was like, man, those are dope. I like these. So you got some suede on here. Pretty, pretty decent suede, you know. It's moving a little bit. See that? Pretty decent suede. It's good stuff. Well-made sneaker. Fresh very comfortable if you know anything about the 8500 series and the grid cushioning system your feet are going to love you for these now <clears throat> one problem this is just me when i want a shoe and i realize i messed up i waited too long this is a size nine i wear nine and a half in sock and eat but i just wear a little thinner sock and i can pull these up i could not pass up on these and we'll tell you why when i get to the next sneaker but what they went on sale for so i'm gonna slide that one over there in official color. Saucony does not get too far into the coloring. It says blue and pink. That's it. They don't come up with crazy, you know, chartreuse number 35 or sweet velvet. You know, the stuff that Nike does sometimes. Not a diss towards Nike, but Nike comes up with some unique color names. So right here, I have um, another pair of the gray 8500s of the same uh, silhouette and colorway model if you will same setup and these are dope these are dope people oh boy and what makes it pop is that yellow right there in the Saucony logo and once again it's not Saucony it's Saucony <laughs> hey shout out to Daquan man he messes with me he, he does that because he knows I always correct people about how you supposed to say the name of the sneaker company? It's Sockety. All right, but back home, Sokoni. Uh, <laughs> once again, you got some 3M right here, you know, around the toe part and right there on the pull tab of the tongue. The icy blue sole again, the speckling, and you got some yellow speckling in here as well. This suede, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Now, <clears throat> given that it's black, and I know I'm, this is a nine and a half, so I'm good with this one. I don't have to worry about anything. I'm, I know I'm going to wear this shoe a lot because I have some outfits that complement this really well. I'm going to have to spray these down, protect them. I don't want the shoe turning ashy. Now, given the suede, it might give it a little bit more flavor, being that it's got some some light hints of the colors in here with this baby blue. 
but this is a dope sneaker, man. It, it feels great. It's comfortable. It's one of those uh, sneakers that when I'm in the, the uh, TV film studio, I'm walking on that hard concrete floor and standing all day. My feet love me for sneakers like this. But what you really want to know, the solution kept talking about something. Move that out the way. Always keep the bags. Not that I have buyer's remorse, but you know, sometimes you might sell the sneaker or something. You, you want to have that bag and that uh, receipt in there. So these went on sale at fifty nine ninety nine. Okay, it came out to one hundred three. However, I sold two pairs of um, I sold a pair of old shell toes and some Pumas for like $55 so I only paid like $47 for these and yeah that was a come up I was like man I know I already know what I'm gonna do so I split the cost the cash in pocket swipe the rest save yourself some money it's just smart shopping people smart shopping so awesome two for one had I had went full retail these have been $220 for both pair um some people don't see a, a, a issue with that because you pay that for some of your J's but 220 and $47 out of my pocket. Well, out of my account. Because I gave him yeah, the rest. But yeah, Sauconies. If you don't have these in collection, you're looking for a good runner. But you're probably one of those youngsters that you're worried about what people are gonna say about you. Remember, style, somebody had to start it. Put it that way. A fad and a trend. Somebody had to start that fad a trend and you could be that person that break free in your school because your outfits fresh and you coordinated properly with it and people are like that, you know, what are those? But those are dope. Now they run it out and get a pair, but stop trying to fit in and have acceptance. Um, I'm going to go on a rant a little bit about stuff like that. Far too many school shootings. I know I have some younger uh youtubers or subscribers pardon me have some younger subscribers here is what's at the catalyst of some of these shootings social media is in essence not very social the people you connect with online you probably have never seen before or have no true connection to them via another person um, pretty much everybody on my social media platforms, I don't consider YouTube one of those. I'm kind of linked to that person via somebody else, all right? Or an organization, if you will, or a school or something. Um, if I don't personally sit in front of them, I can't really call them a friend in its true essence. We're online associates, if you will. But you can build an awesome rapport with somebody online and you basically develop a friendship. But in school, you guys get into these little pods and stuff like that. And it was like that when I was coming up as well. But, you know, the, the outcasts and the ones that are being made fun of re are resorting to social media to fit in because they can be whoever they want. All right. They can be whoever they want online and they're cool. So they, they become outcasts and misfits and stuff like that. And people tease them and bother them instead of you know trying to get to know that person and fit in um quick story in high school about a social misfit if you will um black guy he was into the the goth thing at the time that was starting to pop a little bit goth and grunge and um i'm gonna say his name because it affected me later on um his name was raymond Raymond and I had three classes together and because he was a black kid that was into gothic and grunge that was quote unquote weird to the other black students in a predominantly black high school even though we had people of all different backgrounds. It was diverse but the majority of students were black. So <clears throat> teenagers still being kids, teased, teased, poked and prod. And I found I sat next to Raymond a couple of times and um, the stuff he told me was interesting. And he told me these things because he saw that I had a true interest and I wasn't trying to make fun of him or, you know, being afraid of him because he had black fingernail polish and stuff. I was like, he's just 
he does different stuff. You know, heck, I was different. I wasn't super popular. I was known enough, but because I had good grades and um, I competed in sports that uh, a lot of people weren't truly interested, which was I dropped football, switched to cross country and track because I kept getting hurt. But we didn't have a track in my high school, so we were winning. I mean, we were kicking some serious butt, but no one saw us compete. You know, so we didn't get a lot of the love and um, acclaim and stuff versus a football team that wasn't very good or a basketball team that wasn't very good. So people saw them. But I kind of um, put myself in Raymond's shoes and said, Dad, you know, I'm kind of an outcast a little bit too. But we kind of built like a, a friendship, if you will. And he told me about, you know, certain things within the golf culture and stuff like that. And he would just, you know, tell me things that he wouldn't really open up to other people. And long story short, um, got to school one day and we found out that Raymond was in a really bad accident. He was ejected from a car he and his friend were in. He got into an accident um, and he was killed. Now, early in the school year, we had already lost a few students to violence, um, being robbed. Uh, we also had a student drown in the pool. And everybody kind of cheered, you know, well, excuse me, not cheered. They, they rallied behind those right there because that was, you know, normal kids that that happened to. Um, Raymond's was a little different because there was a lot of remorse because people had teased Raymond. Okay, and Raymond wasn't violent, he wasn't going to do anything, but people teased the, the golf kids because they were different. And, I mean, some of them would be rude and stuff like that, it was a defense mechanism. And I would see him, I would speak to him, and I remember one kid was like, why'd you speak to him? And he's like, he's cool, because I took the time to get to know him, all right? Now, if you look back, say, you know, hypothetically, a, a student wasn't fitting in at my high school, and felt like people had teased him enough and he came to school and shot up the place. It's almost for certain because I took a genuine interest in him, he wouldn't harm me, okay? And it should be that way for everybody. Now, <clears throat> make no mistake, it's not excusing the behavior to say I need to get people back, but it's saying that if you just stop teasing people and open up your social realm, because everybody has worth and value. I don't care what you look like or where you're from. Everybody has worth and value. Even like back to these shoes. I don't wear a lot of the shoes that everyone else wear. But I don't really care about your opinions. But it doesn't make me want to go out and harm anybody. Or make disparaging comments because you don't like my shoes. It's my money. Um, I'm not going to make disparaging comments about you. Because you like a shoe that everyone is like. And it's your money. Um, I always say I'm not going to comment about you know, another man's money unless I help him make it, okay? Or I gave him the money. That's the only time I can have an opinion or something like that. But I've rambled enough. Be safe and get an understanding of what's going on in this, this world that we live in. And log off sometimes. Log off and go out and talk to people, all right? Actually interact, physically interact with people and put the phone down. That's all it's about. Toys R Us closed because nobody's physically going into the stores anymore. And that's why I was talking about the malls and the sneaker stores becoming outlet like because no one's going into the stores buying anything anymore. It's like, well, I don't have to do that. I'll just order right there from my phone on the app. Here's what we're having. Um, the malls used to be a big thing as a kid. You hung out there. Some kids still go to the mall, but not as much. They aren't buying anything. They're just running around the mall on their phones acting a fool kids are kids i get it but hey remember it's not about how much you pay for the sneakers why'd you pay that much in the money boom the solution